of the Lord says in Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. The heathen raised. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So people of God, we ask that you would come this morning. Surrendering all unto him, the God who is our refuge, the God who is our strength, the God who is able to calm the raging waters, calm the fears, calm the troubles in your life. Everything that is going wrong and everything that is up in an upheaval, our God is able to cause it to cease. Our God is an all-wise God. 
He's an all-knowing God. He's an ever-present God. He knows what you're going through, even now. And the Lord has given us instructions. He said, be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Stop your worrying. Stop your complaining. Stop looking to the left and to the right and wondering how we're going to make it. How we're going to get through it. God said, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the earth. I will be exalted among the heathen. Whatever is bothering you this morning, we ask that you would look unto the hill from whence cometh your help, knowing that your help comes from God. These are troubling times. And God, we know that you are the God that troubles the troubles. Hallelujah, we thank you, Lord, for your all-seeing eye. Bless us now, God. Let us find our secret place in you. Let us find our place of comfort in you. Lord, just take us to that place so that we can be surrounded by your presence, oh God. Surround us with your presence, God. Hallelujah, that the enemy can do us no harm. Hallelujah. God, you said in your word that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God, we want to be in that place. We want to abide under the shadow of the Almighty that we may say of the Lord, he is our refuge. He is our fortress. He is our God and he is the one that we will put all our trust in. Father, we thank you now. We give you glory. We thank you that everyone that is in this place, Father, we put down our agenda and we get into your presence that your word may come forth with power that your songs of worship and praise may come forth in power. We ask, oh God, that your deuterous power, that your train will build this temple today, God, like never before, God. Walk up and down these aisles, oh God. Hallelujah, light upon your people. Have your way like never before, oh God. Signs and wonders we call them to be in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we choose you. And we choose to follow you. We choose to obey you, God. Hallelujah. That we would turn from our wicked ways, oh God. That you may heal this land. We pray this in the name of the Father. We pray this in the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God, now in Jesus' name. Let all God's people say amen, amen, and amen. The secret place where I can be with you. You can make me love you. Take me to that place where to that secret place where
Watching us, certainly we welcome you that are joining us by Facebook Live. We thank God for you, and uh, we want to welcome you to our service on this uh, Sunday morning. Praise Lord! This wonderful second Sunday, we thank God that truly God is in the midst of His people. Praise the Lord! The Bible says, "Where two or three gather, there will I be uh, in the midst." Praise the Lord! I just thank God for uh, you all that are here. Thank God for you all that are online watching us. I give God glory. We give God all the praise and the honor. Do his precious name and uh, just exalt his name today. Praise the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I came to church, amen, expecting God to move. Amen. So look at somebody. Praise the Lord. I came to church expecting God to move. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just so grateful. Praise the Lord. You know, how many of us like surprises? Raise your hand. Some of us, amen, have a tendency, man, we, get, we can't wait to get into the package, amen. And, you know, we rest, we have restless nights and sleepless nights sometimes because we got a package coming or something is in the mail. And we get excited because we may not, may have been told not to open it up at a specific time and a specific day. So a lot of times we sit there, we just sit there, we're restless, we have restless, we want to get into the package and so forth and so on. And then when we open it, we get, we, we get the surprise. Come on, say Amen. And I don't you know, I just want everybody to know that God surprises us every time. Come on, say amen. Amen. God surprises us every day of our life. It's a surprise. Come on, say amen. I'm grateful for that. Amen. I like surprises, but can't nobody give surprises like God. And I'm here to encourage you. If you stay with him, you stay focused in him. I'm going to tell you what, amen. Every day will be a surprise. Come on, say amen. Every day will be a blessing. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And we thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord for uh, this morning. So we want to set protocol and acknowledge, amen, that of our leadership and that of our assistant pastor, Pastor Nancy. We thank God for her. Want to acknowledge her this morning. Want to acknowledge our trustee, Brother James Goodjoy. Mother Goodjoy, his lovely wife. Praise the Lord. Our elder here today, Elder Brenda Goodjoy. Amen. We thank God for her, amen, and we certainly thank God for them. We thank God, amen, for uh, our uh, deacon, Deacon Antoine, amen, and his family. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. We thank God for our minister of music, our worship leader, Minister Byron Linder. Praise the Lord. <laughs> We're grateful, amen. Praise the Lord that God is in the house. Praise the Lord. And we certainly want to thank God for we are celebrating 27 years in ministry. Hallelujah. Come on, say amen. 27 years, amen, that the Lord has blessed us, amen, to be in ministry. We thank God for those that have come and uh, those that have gone. But more importantly, we thank God for those that have been faithful, amen, that have been here with us all this time. Come on, give God a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Uh, I don't know about you, but I thank God, amen, for every uh, amount of time, praise Lord, every 27 years. I thank God that the Lord certainly uh, has uh, kept us during these times, amen. And these times have been sweet. These times have been gentle. These times, amen, have been growing pains, praise the Lord. But God has kept us, amen. And so I thank God for that, amen. Without you, amen, we know certainly without the people there will be no church, amen. So we thank God for those that have been a part of this ministry uh, for these 27 years. At this time, we want to take this time to meet and greet, say good morning. Wave to those that are watching us this morning. We thank God for you that are watching us. Wave to them. Amen. Wave to those. Praise the Lord in front of you. Amen. We thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you at this time. I want to also, in terms of announcements this morning, I want to announce that we are uh, uh, starting another project coming up 
uh, certainly uh, this uh, starting now, amen, really starting this last Sunday, but we're starting another project, amen, that uh, is called Mission Central. It is an organization that goes and distributes uh, items or household furniture or household appliances all over the globe, amen. They uh, ship by ship, they ship by train, they ship by plane, they ship items to people who need or in need of necessities that they cannot afford, amen. And so we're asking you to help us, amen, uh, to start this project coming up, bringing your items. Those items can be gently used items, appliances that people can use in their home. Uh, we're asking you to bring them in that we want to start that project, specifically pots and pans, amen. Thank you, Pastor, I'm going there. Thank you, pots and pans. If you have some pots and pans or something that you want to bring in that they can use those items, we ask that you would bring them in also as well. If you know someone who may have a uh, microwave oven that they're, that, that's not in use, you can bring that in, praise the Lord, and uh, we will make sure that they get that item and uh, 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 send that item to them. They're in need of that. But they, they help globally around the world. They help anybody who's in need of appliances and furniture and so forth and so on to help them start them out on their journey of getting a home or getting into apartment, amen, or home. So we're asking you to help us to start that project. Secondly, uh, we want to uh, uh, begin to start our, our drive out for our Toys for Tots. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. That is the second project uh, that we're asking you to uh, pay close attention to coming up in October. So we will be uh, uh, gathering up our list and those items and those things that we need to distribute Toys for Tots to children. Amen. And uh, we certainly will have an age limit on that. Amen. Amen. Uh, but we want to put that out and let you know that those are the upcoming projects that we're having. Also, we understand that uh, we are in need of uh, um, assistance in our uh, Girl Scout organization and so forth and so on. And we're going to ask Sister Fonda to, to give us some uh, information on that. If you would stand, Sister Fonda, please. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Amen. Okay. 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 Amen. Amen. And th this uh, Girl Scout organization is where these young ladies will apply for their badges and so forth and so on. Uh, and, and Each group level. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. They can, you can use this. A amen. Amen. You can use this also. Amen. As group meeting. Amen. You can do that also as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. You definitely can come here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, and is there any other announcements, Pastor, that we uh, neglected to uh, talk about? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God for that. Amen. We want you to get excited about, amen, those upcoming announcements that we're having and help and ask that you would help us all to participate as we normally do. Amen. amen. So we thank God for that. Let's go to our call to worship scripture in your Bible. If you would go with me in the word of God. In the book of John. Chapter four. 
verse 21 through 24. John chapter 4, verses 21 through uh, 24. Amen. When you have it, let me know by saying amen. John chapter 4, verses 21 through 24. Notice what the word of God says. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in, at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verse 24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is John chapter 4, verses 21 through 24. This is the word of God. You have been called to worship God because you are a true worshiper. Amen. And amen. In spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to go to our responsive reading. If you would go with me in your Bible to the book of Psalms. Probably some of our favorite scriptures, Psalms chapter number 34. When you have it, say amen. amen. I see some pages are still turning. Amen. And the word of God reads as follows. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were enlightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his trouble. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. And deliver them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye hosts, O ye saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. And I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see God good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, that cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, mm -hmm. and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Altogether, verse 22. The, the Lord, Lord redeemeth, redeemeth the, the soul, soul of his, his servants, servants, and none, none of them, of them that, that trust in him shall be desolate. desolate. Amen. This is the word of God. Amen. Let us bow briefly in a word of prayer. Eternal Father, our God, Lord, as we come, Father God, we come, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, O God, in one mind and one spirit, God, to glorify you, 
We thank you, God, that your Father God, that you have decided, oh God, to rest upon us today. We thank you, God, for putting in the hearts and the minds of those, oh God, who decided to gather today, Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come, Father God, asking you, God, to have your way in this sanctuary. Have your way, Father God, on our uh, message this morning. Have your way, Father God, in our giving. Have your way, Father God, in our praise and worship. In the name of Jesus. For, Father God, we come not for form or fashion, oh God, not for an outside show, Lord. But, God, we come, oh God, to tell the world, oh God, that there is a remnant, oh God, that wants to glorify God. There's a, God, there's a seed, oh God, in the ground that wants to spring up in holiness and righteousness, oh Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that you would have your way, God. Bring glory to yourself, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let your train come, Father, and fill this temple in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that you would touch those that are watching us by Facebook Live. Touch those, oh God, that are gathered here, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Touch those, oh God, that they might have ears to hear, that they might have hearts, oh God, that will be receptive to your word. Not just in this sanctuary, God, but all over the world, dear God, where your word is going out, oh God, that you might accomplish what you wanted to accomplish in the lives of those, oh God, who need deliverance and who need salvation. We speak that it is so, that somebody will come to Christ today in the name of Jesus Christ. Save somebody, Lord. And we thank you and we magnify you, God. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen, amen. and amen. You may rest off of your feet. Praise the name of the Lord. We're grateful. Hallelujah. That the Lord has blessed us at this time. Praise the Lord. We're going to continue on in our service. And now it is giving time. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, and I'm grateful, amen, that this brother, amen, is a faithful brother in the Lord, and he's going to pass out our envelopes that you might give of your tithes and your offering, amen, unto the Lord. A lot of people don't understand that we're not just giving uh, to the church, but you're giving unto God. God sees all that we do here and all that everybody does, amen, and we want to make that gifts, amen, that of us. Uh, presentational to him. Amen. 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 We want to make sure that we're presenting him that of our best gifts. And so we're going to ask that you would do or be obedient to our officer, amen, who is giving out uh, envelopes and going to ask that we would turn in your Bible to the gospel of Luke for our scripture this morning. The gospel of Luke chapter number 21 Verses 1 through 4. Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. The word of God reads as follows. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. And he said of a truth, I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all of these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God. But she, out of penury, have cast in all the living that she had. She gave her best to God. She gave all that she had unto the Lord. She wasn't worried about what she had at home. She was worried about what she wanted to give in the offering. And I'm telling you, amen, when we learn, amen, to give unto God, God promises in his word that he won't withhold no good thing from us. Come on, say amen. And I can guarantee you when she got home, praise the Lord, I believe in my heart that she had a blessing coming to her. Come on, say amen. Because God saw, Jesus saw what she had given. Come on, say amen. So at this time, we thank God for sowing, amen, and uh, giving your offering this morning. We stretch our hands to our operatory basket, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the seeds that were sown today. We thank you, Father God, for those that have been given out of the abundance of their heart. It is our prayer, dear God, in Jesus' name, O oh God, that you would multiply every seed in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that you would increase, O oh God, this offering that we may present it unto you, that we may be able, God, to help to advance the kingdom of God and do what you have called us to do in Jesus' name. 
God, that we may be able to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, O oh God, and feed the poor. We ask it in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen and amen. Thank you so much. Come on, give yourselves a hand. We bless the name of the Lord. Praise God at this time. We're going to uh, take this opportunity, amen, to hear the word of God in song. And we're going to ask that you would pray for uh, Minister Byron as he comes and lift us up in song. And we're going to ask, praise the Lord, that you would stand on your feet and praise God with him. Amen. And we're going to turn it over to him now as he directs us, amen, in that order. Amen. Minister Byron. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And good morning, Full Gospel. Good morning. Good morning to those who are watching with us online. Uh, good morning. As I always say, it's an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord one more time. You know, to be amongst his people, but also be in fellowship with Father God. Amen. Um, you know, um, as preparing for today, you know, God has been drawing me nearer. Mm nearer to his heart mm -hmm. even more. And my question to you, family, and those who are watching with us, our virtual family as well, what is hindering you from drawing nearer to God? What is hindering you from getting into his presence? What is hindering you from wanting to be in God's presence because the Lord always is calling for us. He's calling for us daily, every minute, every hour, to, to spend some time with him. And because he wants to wrap us in his arms, he wants to hold us, he wants to console us, because he knows everything. He knows all about our troubles. He knows all about our pains, all our torments. He knows all about those things. But when will we get into his presence to give it to him? To lay it before him that he may heal and deliver you. And so if you can this morning, you know, I, 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 it's not about me. It's about what God wants you to do. God wants you to, to get in your posture of yourself today into a place that you've never been before. Amen. To do something you that you've never done before today in his presence. So if you will, please stand with me as we go to God and worship today. As we go to God and to seek his heart today. Amen. Because he loves you more than life itself. He loves you enough that he, he's calling you to come to him, to be in his presence. Amen. Hallelujah.
me Into your arms I'm drawing near to you To dwell with you Oh, it's my desire Lord, it's my desire
Church, the King. Take me to that place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you. You can be loved. To where, to that secret place where I can be with you. You can make me love you. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Hallelujah. Wrap me in your arms. share real quick a divine encounter that I had with the Lord in 2020. This is a multiple part dream, a multiple part vision that I had in an encounter with the Lord. But I want to share with you because many of us here haven't had an encounter with the Lord. Jesus wants to make his presence known unto you. But there's things in place that are stopping him from coming to you. My God, my God. But I want to share this because this is one of my God moments. I don't care if you believe it or not, but this is mine. This is my encounter with the Lord. In 2020, I was, you know, waking up in this dream. I was listening. I go to sleep every night with worship music on. And there was this time where I was listening to Pandora. Actually, no, I was listening to William McDowell. Thank you, Father. William McDowell was playing. And uh, it was in Tennessee. And it was during altar call. And there was these notes that were playing in, in the song. And while he was praying with people, I was in the sleep. I heard these three notes in the spirit. Piano playing these three notes. That's all I heard in the spirit. Next thing you know, I heard behind me, I was laying on my left side. Touch him, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Yes. Touch him, Lord. Yes, Lord. In a meek and lowly voice. Uh-huh. I went, I, I went back and I felt the power of the Lord. Mm. Jesus was behind me. Remember the story of Eli. I had that moment where he was calling me. I had that moment of Eli. My God, my the God. The Lord came to me, praying over me. And then he said to me, no, he said to the angels, he said, angels, bring him to me. My God. Next thing you know, I went from my bed. Come on, Jesus. Up into heaven. I landed on this red carpet in this mansion. The walls were gold. Windows were taller than this building. Mm. There was this golden chandelier in the middle of this room. Mm. A seven-tier chandelier with My all God. these diamonds hanging from them. But yes. yet, all the while, these three notes were playing. These three notes were still playing. I was following the music. I came to a T in this mansion. And as I was going, I could go left or I could go right. I went right. As soon as I went right, there was Jesus playing a piano. Oh, Jesus. My God. Playing the piano. Wearing red. Wearing red and black. Come on, Jesus. Which means warfare. Ah. Playing these three notes. His hair was long, 
Nazarite. He was a Nazarite. He didn't cut his hair. To see him, he stood up and saw me. The angels were trying to get me to get dressed before him. Ah. But I was like, who's touching me? I was, I was going straight to him. I ran to him. And he stopped me. And he looked at me, listening to Father the whole time. Mm. He kept looking at me. I was watching him. He was listening to Father, getting instructed what not to do. Next thing you know, he walked over to this cove. There was a whole bunch of ointments in this little cove. And he grabbed one. I looked at myself. I was all cut up. I was torn up because of I was going to war for all the time. Oh my God, I was in battle God. all the time. I was like, how did I get these? I was thinking to myself. But as I was looking at him, he said, take off your shoes. Ah, come on. And your pants. My God. Remember what Moses said, what God said to Moses? Yes. He said, take off your shoes. This is holy ground. For the place where you stand is holy. That's take off your shoes take off. and your pants. I did. In the ointment, he put in his hand and started healing my body. My God. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. And as he was doing it, all I could say is this. Because in the spirit, you know what you're, what he's, what you're thinking. He knows what we're thinking. Mm. He knows everything. That's telepathic. Come on, Jesus. He knows our hearts in the spirit. Because they conversate that way. Mm. And also, too, the angels know what you're thinking at all times. Yes. At all times. And so, as the Lord was healing me, all I can say is that you are the bomb yes. of Gilead. Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Great position. And next thing you know, I was back in my bed. Oh, God. All I could do was cry before the Lord. Yes. I was in my room just crying. I got the divine encounter. Come on, Jesus. I've had many, but that one really touched Hallelujah. my heart. Come on, Jesus. All I could do was lift my hands up to God. Hallelujah. I anointed my hands with oil Come on, Jesus. and the fire Hallelujah. of God. I anointed my hands Hallelujah. in my room. He, all he can say is, he says, I love you, son. I he said, I love you. I love you. I love you. This is my encounter. You can have your own too. My God, my God. In the secret place, he wants to take you. My God. To the well with him. So he can teach you his heart. My Lord, He can my God. teach you his word. Come on, Jesus. All he wants is his. In the secret place. Wrap me in your arms. So abide. Under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Under his wing. To the secret place where I can be with you. Oh, yeah. You can make me love you. Take me to that place where to a secret place where I can be with you. Yes, Lord, take me. You home. can make me love you. Take me to that place, Lord. Lord. To that secret place yes, where Lord. I can be with you. You can make me love you. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. My God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Lord. 
I'm gonna share it one more time, another dream, real quick. My first dream that I had when I rededicate my life back to Christ. He showed me a young boy sitting in a father's lap with his left ear upon the chest of the father. That's the key. Say it again, Mom. That's what he wants us to do. Listen to his heartbeat. Listen to his heartbeat. Catch his rhythm. Catch his pulse. Catch his frequency. Come on. Connect with him. Yes, Lord. That's what it means to be in a secret place. To dwell with the Lord yes. is to put your ear to God's heart. To listen to his heart for you. Listen to his heart for his people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Grab me in your arms. Grab me in your arms. Grab me. me in your arms, wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your arms, my God, wrap me in your arms, can you see that right now, wrap me in your arms, the Lord reaching out to you. Wanting to hold you right now. Sure Can you sure vision enough. that right now? Sure enough, sure enough. His arms extending out to you. Just to hold you close to him. To love on you. Yes, 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 yes. To love on you. Yes. To console you. encounter with the Lord? Mm -hmm. Will you long for him to come visit you in his own way? Tailor made for you. Because each person is different. No man is the same. He wants to encounter you to show you him, my Lord. To show him show you his beauty, uh -huh. to show you his love for you. But do you long for him? Do you long for his presence? Uh -huh. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise clap. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for Minister Byron, amen, and his testimony and giving us a glimpse of how he has stood before the Lord and the Lord spoke with him personally, amen. God called him up, amen, and spoke to him in a vision. Come on, say amen. And God says that he does that to his people, amen to us in dreams and in visions. Come on, say amen. And so we're grateful for that. We're grateful that, I don't know about you, but I've always wanted God to wrap me in his arms. Amen. Some of you have a father, and that's great. That's wonderful. My God. But I grew up without a father. Amen. In my personal life, in my own home, I had a stepfather, but I grew out without my natural father. Come on, say Amen. But I thank God for a mother who loved me, amen, and men who were instrumental in helping me to 
make me the man that I am today. Come on, say amen. Thank God for God, my heavenly Father, who's been with me all my life. Praise the Lord. I want you to wreck your, come on, somebody give God a hand clap. It's all right. You know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. I want you to direct your attention this morning. And again, I want to commend uh, our daughter in the gospel for preaching, ministering the word on the 30th. I thank God for you, Elder Brender. Amen. We enjoyed the ministry. We enjoyed the tape. And we thank God for everything that was done during that time. Praise Lord. And we pray that lives were encouraged and souls were saved, those that were watching us Amen. by our live stream. We thank God for you. But this morning, I want you to turn with me in your Bible, in the Word of God, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 17. And we want to kind of break down the verses of 1 through 54, or 1 through 51, rather, but time will not permit us to read the entire chapter or the entire verses, but with help from the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, we will certainly do what needs to be done this morning as we break down what God wants to say to you and to me. Amen? Amen. And so, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verses 1 through 51, you may, you may be seated. Amen. This morning, I want to talk about giant-sized problems require, require God-sized miracles. Giant-sized problems require God-sized miracles. You and I, as long as we're breathing on this earth, we're going to always have problems. And those problems can be small. Those problems can be great. Those problems can be as small as a grain of salt, but they're still problems. And so you may be having giant-sized problems in your life right about now. Giant problems like a broken marriage. Giant problems like your health. Giant problems like a financial situation. Giant problems like a car breaking down on you. And every time you get it fixed, something else breaks down. Giant problems that your landlord is telling you that the rent is going up. And you've only been there for a short time. But they want to raise your rent. But whatever it is this morning, I want you to understand, for those of you that are watching us live and those of you that are here, I want you to know that we serve a God. The Bible lets us know who's bigger than any of our problems. Come on, say amen. And he can work it out, amen, if you let him. The point is, we have to let him. And not try to fix things ourselves. Because I'm here to let you know I'm not a fix-it man. There's certain things I can't fix. There's certain things I have to get my son to help me out at home. There's certain things I have to get both of them to help me to figure it out. Because I'm a little bit old, older now, and there's certain plans that I cannot read, certain schematics I cannot read. But I thank God that he always has a ram in the bush that will help us out. Come on, say amen. And I'm here to let somebody know today that the Father God has a miracle this morning with your name on it. Come on, say amen. Uh, he wants you, amen, to understand, and you and I to understand, before we face any of our giants, God is letting us know in the word of God, pray the scripture, come on, say amen, amen, wait on the Lord, this is what he says here, stand firm and stand still and see the salvation of God's promises, and watch God work for you. 
Now, I don't know about you. I don't know if anybody, amen, that will not serve a God like this, who will just tell me to stand there and watch him work. Come on, say amen. Stand there and watch him in awe. Stand there and watch him in his magnificent glory and his divine deliverance. Come on, say amen. Uh, I'm here to let you all know this morning that Star Wars don't have nothing on God. Superman can't touch him. Batman, amen, praise the Lord, don't know nothing about him. Come on, say amen. I'm telling you, let you know this morning that the flash, amen, can't run faster than him. God is all powerful and all knowing. I want to talk this morning, amen, about the story of David and Goliath this morning. To show you this morning the miracle working power of God Almighty. Whereas Goliath was big and stood somewhere between nine feet to nine feet and nine inches tall. And represents the giant size problems that we may have today. Amen. And whereas David was a teenage boy whom God used to face the giant Goliath. I want y'all to get the picture now. Amen. Most of us know, amen, at least something about this particular story. It's a story about two armies, the Philistines and the Israelites. But in verses 1 through 7 of the scripture, of the text, the Bible lets us know if you open your Bible and read that with me or look at that with me, the Bible says both armies were camped out in two different hills with the valley between them. The Israelites, amen, had Saul. And the Philistines had a champion giant named Goliath. You know the story. Goliath was over nine feet tall and, amen, and wore over 125 pounds of armor. He had a bronze leg, amen, armor. He had a bronze javelin. He had a huge spear and an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds alone. He also had an armor bearer, a man that walked ahead of him carrying his shield. Now, I don't know about you, but if I can picture that this morning, this young man that was carrying his shield, that weight was pretty heavy. Because if Goliath was 9 feet 9 inches tall, this man carrying that shield carried that by himself. The Bible says, as this man was walking ahead of him, his shield bearer, the Israelites were afraid, and rightly so. And even though the Israel army, amen, had some military victory, the Philistines were more advanced than the Israelites did. They were more advanced in military might. They were more advanced in weaponry. They were more advanced, amen, excavating, amen, the armor or the metal from the ground. Their weapons of war were far superior and very notoriously, amen, fiercely for them. Now, I want you to get this picture this morning. The Philistines would put swords on their chariots. On their chariot wheels, they would have these swords so the chariot riders could go through the infantry and mow down the soldiers like mowing grass. Some of you have seen Hercules on TV. I'm dating myself now. But some of you have seen that on TV. When Hercules went into the battle, he would ride on a chariot and he would fight in the arena. And he was able to knock down his opponents as he rode on the chariot with the swords and the things, spears sticking out yeah. on the side. Come on, say amen. Yeah, yeah. Get the picture because that's what it was going on mm -hmm. in this battle. So they had just slaughtered, the, Israelite, the, the Philistines had just slaughtered 30,000 Israelite soldiers mm -hmm. in a battle. And this still is fresh going on in their mind amen. according to the word of God. So they were greatly afraid of the Philistines. How many of you know that you can be 
you can have fear over you when you see what the enemy has done to somebody else. Come on, say amen. Fear will grip you. And instead of moving forward, we move backwards. And I can imagine that the Israelites were so afraid because what they had saw, amen, the Philistines do to some of their fellow soldiers. Come on, say amen. And on their main tactic, one of their main tactics was rather than put their whole army into battle, the Philistines would choose one champion to go out and taunt and challenge the other armies they faced to see if they would send out one champion to fight. And whichever side won the losing side will either retreat or surrender. How many of you know that God has not called us into the battle to be to retreat? Raise your hand. Because the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. So the Bible says, and so the Philistines had chosen this champion. They would chosen him well. Here was this nine foot giant named Goliath who was a very skilled warrior. Yes, he, was. he was a very crafty warrior. Yes, he, he majored in assault and battery. Come on, say amen. amen. He was, amen, bad to the bone. Come on, say amen. Uh, he was too legit to quit. Come on, say amen. Uh, he was, amen, mighty and furious. Amen, in his war and in his tongue. Come on, say amen. Uh, he was no joke. Come on, say amen. And in verses 8 and 11, or 8 through 11 of the word of God, the Bible says, here he is taunting and challenging the Israelite army. He said, send somebody out to fight me. But nobody, amen, of the Israelite army would go because they were afraid. Just the words of his voice, just the words of him taunting. Come on, say amen. Just the words of him speaking boldly, amen. And the shout, I like to believe in my heart the words of him looking up, amen, at the Israelites on both sides. And he's in the valley blasting and taunting the children of Israel. And while he's blasting them, the words that he's saying is echoing off the rocks. And when that happens, in the background, that makes you and I even more furious. Come on, say amen. Makes us even more scared. Come on, say amen. But what we also know is how the story goes. So at verse 11, David comes on the scene. Are you with me? In verses 11 through 15, describes David and his family's life. He is nothing more than a shepherd boy. A teenager, not in the military, not yet ready to be trained. Come on, say amen. And in today's modern army, you can go in the military at an age of 16 and 17 years old, years old with a signature from your parents. Come on, say amen. To help to get you in there. Yeah. But back during this time, amen, he was not at the right age yeah. to, be, have, to be able to go into the military, amen, and fight in the battle with his brothers. Come on, say amen. Yeah. Yeah. And so he was nothing more than a shepherd boy. Mm -hmm. He was not in the military, not a champion. Mm -hmm. The Bible says unto us that he was just a kid. Just a kid. He was a son of the man named Jesse. Yeah. Jesse, amen, was an old man. Amen. And he had three older sons who were already fighting against the Philistines. And Jesse sent little David to take some food to his brothers and to bring back a report to see, amen, just how they were doing. In other words, he had the ability for his father to scout them out. Oh, glory to God. He knew how to scout. Amen. He knew how to go back. Amen. And see what was going on with his brothers. His father sent him out to scout out the territory, to scout out how his brothers were doing. And so he went out, amen, on an assignment my God, my God. to bring back a report to his father. In verse 24, upon his arrival at the fight scene, David noticed all the Israelites are scared. 
and running in fear of the giant. Can you imagine with me? In today's modern world, we don't run from fights. We like to join in and cheer the fight on. Come on, say amen. Because some folks don't know that sometimes when the bullets are flying, the knives are going. Come on, say amen. The rocks are being thrown. You shouldn't be standing there because you're subject to get hurt. Come on, say amen. But in this case, amen, as he heard the giant, amen, screaming and taunting the children of Israel, amen, he was not believing what he was seeing. That his brothers and the Israelite armies were being such cowards, David thought. David goes to Saul and asks him if he could, amen, fight the giant. And Saul tells David that he was being ridiculous. How are you going to fight somebody? And you just a little boy. Come on, say amen. But afterwards, in verses 32 and verse 37, somehow David talks Saul and talks him into letting him go up against Goliath. David went out and talked to the king as a little boy. And ask him really what he was asking him, Pastor Nancy, for his blessing. I need your blessing to go and stand up against this giant. Can you and I imagine that? A boy who weighed the same amount has Goliath's armor. Come on, say amen. He's saying, I will go and fight with this Philistine. In verse 38, Saul armed David with his armor. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head. And armed him with the body armor. Uh-huh. But in verse 39 of the text, David said to Saul, I cannot go with these. For I have not proved them. And so he took them off. And that word means prove. That word means he had not tested. Come on, say amen. That equipment, he never wore it. Amen. He's never done anything with it. He said, I cannot prove these because, amen, I have not tested them. Don't go into battle, yes, Lord. in any battle, yes, until you have tested your equipment. My God, my God. Because it may malfunction. Come on, say amen. amen. I know what I'm talking about. Amen, this morning. You can't fire an M16 weapon, amen, until you tested it. Yes. You cannot fire an M16 weapon unless you have zeroed it in on the rifle range. You cannot fire, amen, glory to God, a missile unless you have make sure that you've calibrated it. In the direction in which you want to go. Come on, say amen. Amen. And so in verse 40, David said in verse 39, as we continue that, he said, and he took them off. And in verse 40, David took a staff in his hand, picked out five smooth stones from the stream, Mm -hmm. amen, and placed them in his pouch of his shelter, of his shepherd's bag. Mm -hmm. He took a sling in his hand, and he approached Goliath. Look at what David did. Look at what Goliath said unto him in verses 43 and 44. He said, I am, a, am I a dog yes. that you're coming after me with sticks? Mm. Look at what he called him. Am I a dog mm. that you're coming after me yes. with sticks? Mm-hmm. The word used sticks there. Mm. He's talking about his sling mm. and his staff in his hand. Because after all, he was a shepherd boy. Yes. <laughs> A shepherd boy carrying a staff, that same kind of staff that Moses used <laughs> to divide the Red Sea. Come on, say amen. That same kind of staff that, they, that Moses had. And so he cursed David by his gods and said, come here to me so I can give you flesh to the bird, your flesh to the birds of the sky and the wild animals of the field. But God guided David's actions and gave him the victory over that giant called Goliath. He was ready, amen, to give David, amen, to the fell of the air and the animals, amen, of the land so that he could feed his carcasses to them. And so this is the introduction. But this brings us to our message for today. Giant-sized problems require God-sized miracles. And I realized this morning that most of us in this room today, 
and those of you watching us by Facebook Live mm -hmm. are facing some sort of giant mm -hmm. in your life. Now I'm here to let you know as a servant of God that giants will keep on coming. Yes. Come on, say amen. Yes. Giants, amen, which stands in the way of your future. This giant seems so big and so huge that you can't see your way around it. And you can't see your way through it. Amen. And you can't see a way that you can be defeated. Come on, say amen. But let me tell you something. That what God has for you this morning is for you. Come on, say amen. What God has for you is for you. Don't let the size of the problem, number one, mm -hmm. scare you. That's number one. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 4 through 7. From the beginning of the word of God in the New Living Translation. The Bible says, then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gab, came out of the Philistine ranks mm -hmm. to face the forces of evil. Mm -hmm. He was over nine feet tall. Now, I would not have felt, thought that he would have to come out of the ranks, Mother Brenda, mm -hmm. because he was already visible well. as a giant. Come on, say amen. Yes. But he stepped out of the ranks, amen, nine feet tall, and he wore a bronze helmet and his bronze coat of mail. Come on, say amen. Yes. And we said that it weighed over 125 pounds. Verse 6 says he also wore bronze leg armor, mm. and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. Come on, say amen. Yeah. The shaft of his spear was heavy as a thick weaver's beam. Mm -hmm. The shaft on his spear looked like a tree trunk. Come on, say amen. Yeah. Amen. Chipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor bearer walked ahead of them carrying a shield. So this is saying this morning to us, church, that no matter how big your problems appear, mm -hmm. don't let it scare you. So what was he saying that because they saw him in size, because they looked at him, amen, and his size and his structure, they were already fearful because he stepped out of the ranks amongst the men and they already put in their mind, wait a minute, that we cannot be this big man. Uh -huh. I'm reminded in the word of God that when the children of Israel were getting ready to go over to the promised land, there were giants in the land. Come on, say amen. Yes, yes, yes. But the Bible says that they saw themselves as grasshoppers. Well, Am I right about that? Yes. And the Bible says, as a man think of it in his heart, so is, so is he. If you got that grasshopper mentality, my God, my you need to move out the way. Yes. Come on, say amen. Yes. The Bible says mm -hmm. that when they saw him, it got clearly into their vision. Mm. So church, don't let your vision keep you mm. from your victory. Amen. Don't let your vision keep you from your victory. Amen. You must take every effort to turn your obstacles into opportunities. Amen. By remembering that your extremity is God's opportunity. Amen. Because what you are determined, amen, is what you will see. Come on, say amen. What determines you is what you will see. What determines you is what you will be. Come on, say amen. And what you see determines what you do. And fear sets in when we live by faith and when we live by sight and not by faith. Living by faith. That kind of faith, Deacon Antoine, that according to Hebrews, the faith chapter of the faith heroes. Come on, say amen. We live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, Come on, say amen. amen. So don't let the size scare you. Amen. Walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. The second point, don't let the threats of the problem terrify you. How many of you ever got in a fight in school? Raise your hand. Come on, be honest with me. Come on, come on, be honest. And every time you got into a fight, words were expressed. Mm -hmm. Words challenge us sometimes. Mm -hmm. Words make us scared. 
Come on, say amen. amen. And sometimes we're just sending out wolf messages. Right. We're talking loud and saying nothing. Come on, say amen. amen. Then say it again, sister. Amen. Breath box. Breath box. Amen. We're, we're doing that. A lot of times, amen, but when the fish starts to throw, when the fish are starting to throw, and when we do that, praise Lord, it's the one that throws the hardest punch. You just going to knock somebody out. Raise your hand. Come on, say amen. Because sometimes all you need is one punch. Am I right about that? And when that one punch happened, come on, mother, amen. When that one punch happened, brother, come on, say amen. When that one punch happened, amen, you knock somebody out, you cold cock them one time. All you need is one punch. And the Bible says that Goliath had a lot of words, but all David needed was one thing to do. Come on, say amen. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. All David needed was one thing to do. Hallelujah. So listen to me this morning. Don't let the threats of the problem terrify you. Sometimes it's not just the size of the giant we face, but the threats of the giant. Go back again to 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verses 8 through 11. The New Liberty Translation reads, Goliath stood and shouted a taunt yes, across to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. He said, why are you all coming out to fight? Mm -hmm. He called, I am the Philistine champion. Well, Look at this now. I know I've been into the ring yes. with everybody else, and I ain't been defeated yet. Mm -hmm. This is what he's saying in his mind. Yes. But you are only the servants of Saul. Huh. Choose one man to come down here well, and fight with me. Or fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. Yes. But if I kill him, yes. you will be our slaves. Well, I defy the armies of the Israel of Israel today. Send me a man. Yes. Look at what he said now. Send me a man. Me a man. Well, <laughs> will, that will fight with me. And when Saul, Amen, and the Israelites heard this, yes. they were terrified and deeply shaken. Yes. So, beloved. Listen to me today. Whatever is shouting at you, whatever is shouting at you every day you wake up and every day of your lives, whatever it is that's threatening you today, amen, glory to the Lamb of the living God. Amen. I'm here to let you know that it's simply a part of the devil, amen, to get you and to destroy you and to kill who God has destined you to be. Come on, say amen. It's the devil's scheme. Amen. To distract you and to stop you from the destiny that God wants you to go. It's the devil that wants you to back down in fear. Because as Revelations 12 and 10 says, he is an accuser of the brethren. So don't be afraid. Come on, say amen. Why are you trying to get your victory? The devil's always standing before my God accusing you. Come on, say amen. But you need to let the devil know that that's not who I am. That's not what I was born to be. That's not who God made me to be. Amen. So what that Ephesians 6 and 16 says, something else about the devil, mm -hmm. that he throws fiery darts at you. Don't be afraid, church, this morning, for God is with you. Come on, say amen. amen. The third point that I want to talk about. Don't let the relentlessness of the problems overwhelm you or get the best of you. Because there will be some problems in our lives that will never quit, that seem like they will never quit. And that's exactly what Goliath did. He was, he was relentless against his foes. And I know some of you have faced your giants for a long time. Just like the Israelites did. Because the Bible says in verse 16 that every day for 40 days. Listen, listen. This was not just a one-time thing. He was doing this for 40 days. 40 days. It's significant in the Bible. It rained for 40 days. 
and 40 nights. Come on, say amen. How many times did Jesus was up on the mountain? Come on, say amen. Huh? 40 days. Come on, say amen. 40 days is significant in the Bible. So for 40 days, Goliath would get up early, walk down the valley, and taunt the children of Israel. Just taunting them, looking at them and marching and walking, just taunting them for 40 days, talking bad about them and their king. Come on, say amen. amen. And he would stir up at the rocks behind where the soldiers of Israel were hiding because he was relentless. But so is a God of our God. Come on, say amen. amen. He is delivering us out of all of our troubles and all of our fears. We just read in the word of God, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Out of them all. How many of you know that when you have God on your side, you're hiding behind the rock? <laughs> Come on, say amen. You're hiding behind the rock. You're already behind the rock. You don't got to find a rock. You're already behind the rock. Come on, say amen. With God on your side. So this brings us to my final point. Number four. Throw God in the face of your problems because he's the answer to our problem. Not our family, not our friends. Come on, say amen. Not your money, not your material wealth, not your power, nor your prestige. But God. Come on, say amen. Say, but God. David did, didn't need Saul's armor or weapon to fight this giant. He needed, God. Yeah, he needed God. Let's continue on in the text. Let's read verses 38 through 40. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, then Saul gave David his own armor, uh -huh. a bronze helmet. We read the story again, but let's read it again. Mm -hmm. And a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped a sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like. In other words, he wanted to see how it felt as he was walking. He wanted to see how it measured up on him as a little shepherd boy. And I'm here to let you know because Saul was a man, David was a boy. Come on, say amen. Have you ever seen this kid with baggy clothes on? Come on, say amen. Have you ever seen people walk down the street with sagging pants? Come on, say amen. And I know that's the groove today. That's the thing today. But I can imagine David, amen, walking, amen, with trying to have on the arm of Saul and trying to move and walk about, amen, physically in his body as a little shepherd boy and realizing that to himself that this was not going to work. So David said that he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these. He protested to Saul, I'm not used to them. So David took them off, and he picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd bag. This morning, I've given each one of you a stone. Look at that stone. And remember, and reflect of what David had in his hand. Come on, say amen. amen. Then the Bible says that he put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with the shepherd's staff and a sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And this is when David threw God in the face of his giant. <laughs> Come on, say amen. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty pulling down strongholds. Come on, say amen. Uh, we don't need to have physical weapons to defeat the enemy. Come on, say amen. You just need one God. You just need somebody, amen, who sits on the throne and looks low, looks down low, amen, and knows that thoughts from afar off. You just need the God of David. In verses 41 through 47, Listen to Goliath. Goliath walked out towards David with his shield bearer ahead of him. 
verse 42 say, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. He said, I am, a, am I a dog? He roared at David. Now, he was already a, a, a offended that he was a boy. Yeah. The second thing that he was offended by was that he was not the size of a man. Well. Come on, say amen. Yeah. So I can imagine that got him stirred up uh -huh. because he was not the size of a man. Well. And so he looked at this ruddy-faced boy. Mm. He said that you come at me with sticks. Mm -hmm. And as he cursed David by the names of his gods, uh -huh. come over here. And I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. Yes. Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I come to you in the name of the Lord. I come to you in the name of King Jesus. I come to you in the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords. Yes. My God, my God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come to you. Yes. In the name of the Lord. Of the heaven's army. <laughs> I like that. Y'all yes, don't get that. Pastor Nancy, he had an army behind him. On, that the Goliath couldn't see. <laughs> he had an army behind him. That Saul didn't know nothing about. Come on, say amen. He had an army behind him. He said, in the name of heaven's army, <laughs> in the name of heaven's army, in the commanding general of heaven's army, he said, I come to you, amen, in the God of the army of Israel, whom you have defiled this day. You need to know this morning who we have on our side. When you stand up for God, the Bible says that David said, if I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Everything will be all right. Listen what he said, church. He said, today, the Lord will conquer you. And I will kill you and cut off your head. Now, you can imagine how Goliath felt. And how are you going to do that when you can't even wear Saul's armor? How are you going to do that with just a staff and a slingshot? How are you going to do that and you don't have no armor on? Uh, yes, but with God, all things are possible. My God, my God. And then he said unto Goliath, I will give the dead bodies of your men my God, my God. to the birds yes. and wild animals. And the whole world would know yes, that there's a God in Israel. Somebody needs to know that there's a God in your house. <laughs> Somebody needs to know that there's a God on your job. Somebody needs to know huh, that there's a God in your life. Somebody needs to know huh, that there's a God at your website. Somebody needs to know. And this is a true statement because now the world does know that there was a God or there is a God that was with the children of Israel. David's prophetic word came true. He said, and everybody assembled here we know that the Lord rescues his people. Because somebody said, he rescued me. He rescued me. But he said not with the sword and the spear. This is the Lord's battle. And he will give it to us today. Wasn't with the weaponry that he needed to defeat Goliath. As we go on and continue, we prepare to close. In verses 48 through 51, this gives us the victory. Come on, say amen. It reads in verse 48 through 51 of the text. Notice what it says. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag, taking out a stone. Take out the stone this morning. My 
Hallelujah. And the Bible says he hurled it with a sling. And he hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in. And Goliath stumbled and fell. Face down to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone. For he had no sword. Then David ran over. Let me pause right there. <laughs> because what he did was, when he hit him in the forehead, he hit him, he hit him dead center. Come on, say amen. That's what you got to do. And when he hit him in the forehead, if you attack the mind, the body will fall. Come on, say amen. And the Bible says as he hit him in the forehead, the body, the Bible lets us know that when he hit him, his body fell to the ground. And how did it fall? Look at somebody and say, face down. He said, I'm going to send you back to Mother Earth from whence you come. This is what he said to him in his spirit. And it's not in the Bible, but he said, I'm going to send you back to Mother Earth from whence you have come. Praise the Lord. He let him know, praise the Lord, that the Lord fights for me. And the Bible lets us know that he took out, amen, the David said, the Bible says he took out Goliath's sword. Now how could he not, listen, 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 how could he not lift up the armor and wear the armor of Saul? But yet he was able to pick up the sword of Goliath. Did y'all hear me? <laughs> Come on, say amen. He was able <laughs> to pick up the sword of Goliath. Come on, say amen. I don't know about you, but the cartoon character that slings the hammer ain't got nothing on David. Come on, say amen. I'm talking about Thor. Come on, say amen. Thor ain't got nothing on David. David picked up the sword. And as Goliath fell to the ground, church family, and those that are watching us by faithful life, the Bible says that he was able to cut off his head. Hallelujah. And he chopped off his head from the back to the front. Y'all don't hear me. Amen. Glory to God. He chopped off his head from the back to the front. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of the living God. David was victorious over his giant. Yes. You and I need to understand that we have the ability to cut off yes. our enemy. Yes. We got the ability to cut him down. Mm. Don't need a weapon. We just need God. Yes. We just need the word of God. Yes. Come on, say amen. Yes. If God be for us, yes. who can be against us? Come on, say amen. David faced this giant, and he ran full speed, amen, toward the giant and was victorious. Oh, I love that part. Because, see, amen, church family, he didn't creep up on him. Once he gave him the word, what he going to do? The Bible says he ran to him. He said, I'm coming. I'm letting you know I mean business. I'm letting you know that I'm for real. I'm letting you know, amen, that the Lord fights for me. I'm letting you know that I'm not afraid. Say it again, son. He fought a bear. He fought a lion, a prime bear. Amen. Amen. David battled his giant in this text. Mm -hmm. But David had five things going for him. And we don't have time to go into mm -hmm. those things. David had commitment. commitment. He had courage. Right. Come on, say amen. Yeah. He had communication. He had capability, uh -huh. and he had confidence. Uh -huh. Come on, say amen. amen. Well, one of the main things he had, he had faith. Hey. And so, I don't know what your giant is today as you're watching us by live stream. <laughs> as we said earlier, it could be your finances. It could be your health. It could be your way with children. It could be your habits. Because every time you try to stop 
do it. We, you go back into it. Come on, say amen. amen. It could be your cheating on one another as spouse. Come on, say amen. amen. But whatever it is, God can deliver you. Amen. It could be that you're having psychological problems, oh mental problems. But whatever it is, God, amen, will give you the victory. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. But all you got to do is pray the scripture and stand on the word of God. All you got to do is find yourself, amen, and gather yourself with somebody, amen, who can lead you through it. Come on, say amen. amen. Don't go in your own strength, but go in your, the strength of the living God. And when you walk into this building, as I said, I've given you a stone. I want you to take it in your hand because it represents your victory. Amen. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. Uh -huh. The stone that was given to you this morning, it represents your victory. I want you to remember what David did with just one stone. My God. He only did it with one stone. The Bible says he took five stones. Right. Come on, say amen. amen. And I like to believe, amen, it is, it is believed that he took five stones. Because David, amen, glory to God, was preparing himself yeah. for what was going to happen perhaps after the situation. Come on, say amen. amen. But he was not doubting God that God would not give him the victory. He was not doing that. But what he was doing was making preparation for what might come after that for those men or those armies that might come after him or those soldiers of the Philistines that might try to come after them, him. So he was preparing himself. But when you're a servant of God, it only takes God one time. Church family, once, one time. But God also requires us to always be prepared. Come on, say amen. And today, I want you to keep this stone with you as it signifies your victory. Amen. And as you look into the face of your giants, I encourage you to not let the size of the problem scare you. Don't let the threats of the problem terrify you. Don't let the relentlessness of the enemy overwhelm you. But rather, throw God in the face of all your enemies for your ultimate victory is already there. Come on, say amen. amen. I dare you this morning, encourage you this morning to put God before your problem. Amen. Be encouraged this morning. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. This is the word of God. Amen. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. This morning, those of you that are watching us by Facebook, live this morning and those of you that are here I pray that you realize this morning as David did that he had God on his side and the Lord and the heavenly armies armies, armies were fighting with him in the battle that you realize it doesn't matter how small you are or how big you are God will fight for you. And if we look at the Bible, the God, God always dwindles down people that we sometimes, we think we need 3,000 men to fight for us. But we don't. He said, when two or three gather, there will he be in the midst. Come on, say amen. He just needs some faithful people. Faith believing people. Mountain faith moving people. Come on, say amen. That will stand up and stand for the Lord. We're living in a world where the world around us needs the people of God to stand up. Amen. We're being run over by the sinful behavior in this world. Come on, say amen. God needs people that will rise up out of the ashes and declare that God is still God. Come on, say amen. God needs people that will rise up and fight against the political system and let them know, amen, that we serve only one God yes. and we shall have no other God before us. Come on, say amen. amen. I don't know about you, but this word, amen, this morning touched my heart. Amen. This word of God touched my heart because so many people have backed up and moved away from serving God, amen, and they're walking around like there is no God at all. Wow. I want to encourage you this morning. Let the Lord fight for you. 
and when he fights for you, sometimes all we need to do is stand back and watch him work. Other times we may need to get involved. But when we get involved, we don't have to be afraid of the taunting and the people hollering at us or screaming at us because God is on our side. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. As you stand, we open the doors of the church. Amen. Is there one that wants to give their life to Christ? Is there one that has been in the backslidden state and you want to return home unto the Lord? Jesus said in the word of God, in Revelations, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Is there one that wants to open the door now and let him into your heart? Is there one that's tired of the problems that you've been facing? We're going to always have problems, but we can also always have victories. They can only be through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Bible says in the word of God, he that cometh unto me, I will no wise cast out. Is there one that you have a giant-sized problem and you need a giant-sized miracle? Would you come and give your life to Christ this morning? Those that are watching us by Facebook Live, come and let God rescue you. If he rescued David and the children of Israel, thousands were saved at that time. Think about that. Because David fought the giant, thousands' lives were saved and spared because of him and because of God working through him. Is there one that wants to give their life to Christ? Praise the name of the Lord. Is there one that's watching us by Facebook Live? If that's you, I'm asking you to lift your hands up to God right now. Stretch your hands toward heaven and say to the Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you made that confession this morning, you made that commitment, I'm here to let you know, amen, that you have been saved right now. You have given your life to God. Is there one? Is there one? God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. This is the word of God. You may be seated at this time. Amen. Praise Lord. We thank God for all of our family that's here today that's watching us. Thank God for you. We thank God. Amen. For uh, glory to God for those that's watching us by live stream. Thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for my brother here this morning, Gerald and his family that's here with us again today. 